Hey, yep, it's me. Oh my God, that's it. <laughs> um, yes, it is Thursday night again, and let's have some fun. Boy, I'm always rushing to the very last second. Um, we're a little late, about half a minute late. Um, thanks everybody for showing up. Uh, boy, look at all of you guys. You're all ready to go. So let me just explain one thing about this painting. People were asking me um, about this painting, and this is a, I met somebody from Trinidad, and he was an artist at this uh, in Orlando. And what he had um, said, he wanted to learn how to do watercolor. And so he wanted to show me a bunch of pictures. And so this is a bunch of pictures that he had gotten. I think this one is from Belize. I think he was saying this photo was from Belize. And so I got a bunch of extra paintings or photos from him too. So hopefully um, Bevel is um, watching tonight <laughs> in Trinidad. <laughs> and so we'll see. I'm not sure what time it is there, but okay. So today we've got a Erdinger beer. And so we're going to see what this is like. A German beer. It was always good German beer. <laughs> Let's see if we can do a little pour here. Let's see if we can do a nice one this time. So I have to wait. No, of course I can't do that. Oh, look at all that foam. Okay, we'll put that aside. <laughs> uh, one of these days I'll learn how to pour a beer. <laughs> uh, welcome, everybody. Hey, there he is. There's um, Bevo. <laughs> oh, I wonder what time it is there in Trinidad. <laughs> in Tobago? Oh, right. Very so. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for, oh, this one, this um, photo, um, Bubble says is from Barbados. And so I want to show you what I had done first this afternoon. I did a not so good a job this afternoon. And so um, I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing. But first, for all you newcomers and um, Bubble, thanks a lot for showing up. <laughs> and um, so uh, first, our websites, anything you want to know about what I do, um, where I'm at, what I'm doing, Classes I'm teaching are all here on my website at either davidartbecker.com or beckerart.net. So either one you can go to. Supplies we're using today are my Holbein watercolors, of course, uh, my Holbein brushes, my Becker Art brushes. Um, I didn't use transfer paper. Um, the masking fluid, I was about to use masking fluid, but I couldn't find any. So um, I was going to actually use some masking fluid on the little flowers. And then, of course, my Stonehenge aqua paper. And so let's go to our value study. So here, let me show you why we're doing this picture. And um, the, um, the pictures that um, Bubble had uh, given me remind me a lot of my favorite artist, my favorite watercolor artist, who is one of my favorite. There's many I have, but this um, guy, Ogden M. Pleisner. If you ever get this book, this, this guy's great. And um, the two paintings you see below here, those were done by Ogden M. Pleisner, the ones right here. These right, this one and this one. Those were done by Ogden M. Pleisner, and it kind of reminded me of this photo that Bevel had given me. And so um, uh, I just thought, okay, this is awesome. I mean, this photo, I did expand it a little bit on the, this edge right here um, from the photograph because the photograph actually was lined up. It had a tangent right on the edge of this. So I just brought it out a little bit in Photoshop, added a little bit extra to there. And so um, this is the one I did this afternoon. And um, I didn't get the colors right, and here we are working full color, right? <laughs> and I didn't make myself, I, I thought I had, I was going to use three colors, but I ended up by using way too many colors. And this one doesn't look that bad here. This one right here, this one I did this afternoon, doesn't look as bad. And I also added a person because I liked what um, Ogden and Pleisner had done down here by adding people. And all this work, he mostly adds people because it gives a little life to the paintings. You don't have to put it in. A bunch of people in class today did not put people in. That's fine, you know, you don't have to put people in. It'll still be a nice um, composition. I just want to put it in because I didn't do it. <laughs> and so let me go right to our tabletop here and we'll get started. So here again is the painting I did. And as you can see, um, I did a kind of a cool uh, foreground. When you look up here, that's more of a warm shadow. I got the right values, I think, um, as we were talking values. I actually, let's go back to the value pattern. Um, so here, if you look, the values, this is the light and my sky is the light. Everything else, and maybe there's a little bit of ground here, is actually in your dark. So the only light I'm gonna to try to um, show is this right here and this in the top. The roof is dark. I consider even the vet mat middle tones, You like I always say, middle tones can go either way, light or dark. But the composition would work best when you have this top part light and this and right here light. And the guy will be um, light on the edge, rim lighting kind of, if I put a guy right here. And he's going to be lighter. He's going to be in the light. And his, of course, the shadow side will be in the dark. But this, and then also these um, the little flowers here just are kind of like what Ogden did here with his um, magnolia bush right here, or tree. 
And so here, this one too, look at how you get the light. Now, um, I was not going to use blue in the sky, but I did, and that was a mistake, I think. Again, always, if you're going to use blue, um, it kind of forces you to use orange. But then I used green, and then a complement of green is red. So now I've got four colors in there. And, and I've got purple and yellow, so I'm just fighting every single, um, every single color scheme in here. So that's what I, um, I'm going to change that. I'm not going to do a blue sky on this one. I'm going to do a yellow sky like Ogden did in his um, work because, again, you have to stick with the color pattern. You can't have the whole color wheel. I mean, you can, and it looks fine, but if you want it to look like an Ogden and Leisner, and I looked at a lot of his work, and if you want to look more natural and not so rainbow-like, then I'm going to add a little bit more gray into it too because I've got a lot of vibrant colors in here. A violet. I've got a violet foreground here in this area is my shadow and I had too much light in here because like the value study remember I said the value study is important that the sky is light and this area right here and the rest is actually in your dark I'll show you how to also do these lights um, these lines in the rooftop that were really easy to do and actually we, we were super amazed at how easy they were so let's get going and again Bevel thanks you so much for letting us use your um, photograph photography and anybody who has questions, please um, ask them and I'll look up every once in a while. Oh my gosh, we got a lot of people here today. So hey, hey, Marianne, hey, Sue, hey, Ann, Barbara, Phil, Karen, Tina, Monica, Claudia, <laughs> Bevel, uh, Maura, we got Suze. Okay. So yeah, I, I put the, um, Jan asked that I put the person, yeah, I, um, I put the person in there, I just, I like giving it life. I like giving a picture life. And actually, Bevel had given me a bunch of other scenes. And actually, I was going to actually do one through a village. But this one was a little bit easier to start out with, I thought, than the one he had, he had a couple more that he had given me to try out with. And so, um, okay, the path leads you into the house. And it leads you right into the front. Or this path right here. Um, and blocked by the trees and so that's all good. So let's go put this one aside and here I have it drawn up again This time I have the guy carrying a bag instead of here. He wasn't carrying anything. I just thought I put a different guy in there It was gonna actually start out as a lady, but my my um, drawing got a little bit off on that So let's go right to it. Okay, and so our lights Boy, lights kind of weird today. All right, here we go Get my brushes and so we're gonna start with the sky and like I said the sky Somehow, something's wrong with these lights. It's kind of dark on my screen. Hold on one second. Let me just um, adjust the light here. Sorry about this. Whenever that, there, we go. there we go. That's a little bit better. All right. So let's go right away with wetting my sky. And I don't have to worry about wetting into my rooftop because that will be darker later. So I'm just going to do the sky. And like I said, I'm not going to do a blue this time because I'm going to go more with a yellow. Yellow with my violets, of course. And... Um, and I will probably go with um, a warm, uh, um, probably more of a red-green combination. Because there is a lot of green and a lot of red in this. And so I'm going to go stick with that. And that doesn't mean I can't put um, a violet and a little bit of violet in that, in that color. And also yellows. So yellow and the red kind of. I just don't want to put as much blue into this one this time. And so I'm going to take a little yellow. And I toned down my yellow by using white with my yellow. Um, I know a lot of people don't like using white, but I find it really tones down my whites. Instead of getting a white with a color yellow with white in it, just use white. And then you can make your any yellow you have into a nice soft, soft pastel yellow. So I just wet the whole paper. Remember, I wet the whole paper. Stonehenge Aqua paper. I'm using today. I'm using a um, cold press. Cold press paper. Um, why did I use to choose 300 pound? I always use 300 pound. Um, 300 pound paper because it doesn't wrinkle. I can get, make it really wet and it won't um, buckle or anything like that. So that's why I use basically um, 300 pound. I just don't like buckling. I don't like it when it warps and stuff. And um, it's easier that way. I know you can wet the backside of 140. I just like the feel of 300 pound. Now with this yellow, I'm going to go and make my green with my blue, my. Um, Prussian blue or ultramarine blue, a little bit of Cronacridum gold. And um, I'm going to make it much darker this time, but actually let's not do that yet um, because I want to take my lights, this yellow, 
the yellow right through the building side here a little bit. Because again, this is going to be, again, when you can go through things, that's the best. I'm going to keep a little bit of the white of the, of the paper here, but I'm going to make this side of the house, which is my light. And down here, I'm just going to make that all the same kind of floating version of the same color of the sky. This building is basically on the side, a little bit of a, like a pinkish color. Maybe we'll put a little pink in there. You know, it's a dirty, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, dirty pink, I guess you could call it. And uh, maybe beige. And I'm always gonna look up for questions. Of course, there's a typo in my message. Yeah, I just like putting people in my paintings again because it gives it life. Um, and if I, I really love this Ogden and Pleisner, his um, paintings, him and John Pike. If you look at John Pike's work too, they always added a lot of people into their paintings because it gives it life. It kind of gives it a little bit of life to the paintings. So right down here again, I'm going to put a little bit of the yellow. And I will be using green at this time, but I'm not going to be using the blue and orange as much. I'm trying to steer towards more towards the grays within the red and um, green complements. And when I do this, I'm going to do pretty dark green because I wanted to um, follow that value study where I make the background nice and dark back here. And of course, now I've been using a soft edge across the house here. I'm going very, very dark. Look how dark I'm going. And that's okay. I'm going to put a little bit of um, yellow and orange or red. I can put a little red in there because I'll brown it up a little bit. I know this top of these trees are a little bit yellowish. They're kind of, ye the leaves are a little bit more yellow right here. And this is into a wet wash. Now remember, that'll keep it nice and soft edged. Always keep those edges soft if you want the background to stay, stay back. So look at the beautiful edges that I get. I was just bleeding in there. And if you use enough paint, now it's nothing like this, like the picture, you know, because the picture is a blue sky, and I just want to make it more work together on its own. Um, it's just it's something we artists can do. You can do it exactly like the photo, and I'm not saying that's wrong to do it like the photo. I'm just trying. I'm trying to copy. <laughs> I can imply it. I'm just trying to look through his work, and what is it that he does that makes his um, so his paintings are so moody and just so amazing to me. And I just study a lot of the painters. When I'm doing a certain kind of picture, and I know that an artist that I kind of really like has done a painting like that, I will look at it and try to see and, and kind of go through it and see what he had done and see if I can replicate what he had done. And he used a lot of more gray colors in his work. And so I'm just trying that. I, you know, it's not maybe my style at the moment. I'm not sure what my style is. But it's something to keep in mind just to try to see how other artists have done something because they've worked it out for you. And so you can just go ahead and practice with that. And, and then when you go do your own paintings, you know, a lot, a lot of that will transfer into that. Now this is pretty dark right there. I'm gonna maybe not make it quite that dark and put a little bit lighter in there. All right, and then this comes down. Now I'm gonna t take my round brush really quickly because I'm going around this guy here. And so um, I'm gonna put that right in there right away. And I know I'm going right into my darks right away. My glasses. I guess I have glasses on here. Okay, these are not the ones I was wearing, but okay, this, these will work too. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this real quickly around this guy. Let's see, real, real quickly, I'll go around this. Now, how detailed you get and how how um, clean your lines are all depends on your your ability to do the to do. Um, like a lot of people will do a really tight painting. That's up to you, how tight you want to get. Do you want to go looser with your brushwork, go tighter? That doesn't have anything to do with the composition and all that stuff. That, that still is all the same for, I don't care how your style is. Those styles stay the same. Now here, I'm going to do a little bit more purple. I'm going to go around this guy. There's his arm, there's the package. And then down here, this is supposed to be actually a fence. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking a little bit of that green out of there and going to put a little bit more of the Lavender in there. And lavender and green work well together. They're fine. Purple and green are kind of like, to me, green is kind of like a yellow. And so that all works all fine together. And so here's the fence. I, I didn't, I don't have the fences I'd liked. It's, it's kind of more of a soft edge. That's fine. 
It's not an important edge. It's in the background, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. If later on I feel that this got too dark, I can always rub out. You can always rub out. Don't worry. You can just go like this and rub out a little bit of the, the light. Put a little bit of light in. A little more of the green in. Okay, that's that side. Let me just go around here. There's a shadow that comes down right on the bottom of it and it also defines the stoop here. Real quickly, I'll define the stoop. I'll look up in a second, see if anybody's got questions. Let me just get this side done real quickly too. So this side, I'm gonna try to fix, do the same as that side. So, um, so they kind of match. Now I don't have any more water on this side, so I'm gonna spray it a little bit. So, cause it already dried this side. And so I'm just spraying with my sprayer. And I'm not going to go into the building because the building is should be darker. Uh, so I could, but it'll give me a liner there, especially if it's transparent. So I'm not going to go into that. Like, uh, path leads you into the house. Thanks for doing old wood. <laughs> Why did you choose? Okay. Answered all those. I think I didn't look way up above. I think it was just saying hi. Hello, everybody. Here we go. So we're going to use a little bit more violet for the fence. And um, again, that's the background, so don't be so um, worried about exact what's happening back here. You don't have to make it too tight, unless that's your style to be very tight, super, super tight. Then yes, you make it you know, really nice. I was just looking at the AWS um, catalog, which came out last week, and I was looking at a lot of the work, and there's so much work nowadays that it's so tight and so um, exact. And yeah, that's all good. You know, some of the stuff is very tight. I can't really paint that way, though I want to learn how to be a little bit more careful with my brush strokes so it's not as wild sometimes, you know, and especially in your center of interest. But um, it's all good. So now we're going to go across the top of the, um, of the walkway here, and I'm going to pick up again this yellowish tone because I want to put a little bit of light and shadow across it from this tree here. Again, these are my lights. I just work at my lights. Now, yes, that is my dark back there. Look at how light that got, you know, because it's 20% lighter than what I thought it was going to be, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be super, super dark. You know, it doesn't have to be like black and white. So let me just put a little bit more dark over on this side. Take a little bit of purple and dull down my green. Purple dulls down green really well. You know, it makes it a nice green, a dull green, because basically green is yellow. And so purple and yellow make it a nice gray and brown so that you can do that. So I'll do that on this side too here. I'm just going to put a little bit of a dark through here. Get a little bit more foliage in front here. Now that didn't, my, I put my finger in when it dries already and I just, and I need to get it to look a little bit soft, but I don't want to wet the whole thing again. But just take your finger and dab it and it'll dab it into the paper. All right, so there we have the background. Background's done. Now let's get the foreground lights. The foreground light um, will be actually this part right here, which I already kind of did. And so I'll put a little bit of yellow into that area, orange and yellow, kind of gold. Gold is like a yellow too, right? So we're just going to add gold right here. I'm just going to put in the gold. I guess I could use cronacrum gold, right? <laughs> it's already got green in it. So maybe I'll put a little cronacrum gold, run that across here real quick. And again, if you look at Ogden's um, painting. Let me just go back here just for a second. So here, if you look at Ogden's work, I mean, he's got a blue roof or kind of a, a aqua roof here. Um, a lot of a lot of golds in the bottom work down here. Really nice stuff. I mean, look at that gold and and look at the dress. He's got blue and the guy, I guess it's more orangey and gold. Golds in the golden blue. So this is what they did more here, which you could still do. Um, but I'm using more of the red. And also this is like red, uh, he doesn't have any green though, that's, see? See, I should follow him <laughs> and not use green. What am I doing using green, are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, let's go back. And so, um, so now let's get our, we got our lights and now we got um, the flowers. I'm gonna keep, um, I'm gonna keep the flowers white. And I was gonna put mask white on there, but I couldn't find it today. It was, it, I just don't have it right now with me. So I'm gonna go around it, but I'm going to put the nice light colors green from the yellowish yellow green I'm going to use for the for the um, leaves going around some of the right some around some of the flowers 
and then I will put I will negative paint when it comes to the other parts of this. And so I basically I'm not using green green as I'm using more of the yellow and the green a little bit of the green, but not that fake green. I don't like fake green. <laughs> I'm not sure what fake green is. It's just that green that doesn't look like it really comes from nature. It just comes from a tube. Sometimes you buy it. So here I'm just putting in, again, these are my lights. This is not my darks. These are my lights. I'm going around my light areas of the flowers because they're just going to be white. And then a couple of branches through here. All right. And we're going to go around that to show, show the, um, now the windows, what I did on, on this last one here, I'm going to show you on this last one, what I did is I made it lighter than the windows on the actual scene here. What I want to do is I want to make a glass reflect the sky. So they will have a little bit of this yellow in there. But I want to make it a little bit darker. And so that would be main, mean that it's probably more of a gold that we want to get in there. And so I'm going to put like a gold throughout this window. And maybe a little bit of pink and um, yellow makes a gold. Orangey gold. Because glass reflects what's around it, right? I mean, glass is... Put a little bit down here too. This will reflect, and this will be the color then of what the object, the dark object around there is going to, um, this will be the framework of the window also. Put a little bit of reflected earth tone. I'm going to make this shadow a lot more warmer than I had done this afternoon. So I'm just kind of going in here. And yes, this is not as tight as, um, you know, some things I've seen lately. Um, but that's not my style. My style is to do a large areas. And I'm pretty quick with my brush strokes. And so I like to have a lot of lost edges. My whole thing is about losing edges. And I really like to lose edges. So you don't show every single thing on a picture. The wood will look like wood because I'm going to be putting a little bit of texture on it later on. By me taking my brush basically across it like a dry brush. So there's the color of the windows. And this is the light. It's going to be dark around it, and then this will pop out, and this will be the framework. This will be the framework of the window. And again, a little bit of cronacrum gold. Boy, I'm using a lot of cronacrum gold today. And I'm just kind of going in there. And I guess there is some kind of grays in there, so let's put some gray in there maybe too. I'll just put some gray in. How do I get gray? I can use um, uh, lavender, maybe with a little bit of black. That'll give me a nice gray. It'll give me a warm or cool, depending on what I dip into first. Cool if I'm going into a cool color, warm if I go into a warm color. But the lavender is kind of like in between. That's what I call it the magic color. It's in between everything. It always works out well. Let's see. And then down here, I'm going to get the the foundation. Just put a little, some of the light parts of the foundation down here. Again, more gray. So I'm going to take white. With a little bit of whatever's in my palette, if I put white in there, it's gonna it's gonna be a nice a nice gray. It's gonna be much darker. All right, I think we're good. Let's go right into um, the lights in this guy. We need the light part of the guy, and so I'm gonna give him a little gold on the side here. I should just leave white on the edge, and then we'll give him dark pants. So we'll just leave white on the edges. Again, this is just the, the light color that's going to be on him. And I'm just picking up colors that I already have around so that he matches the scene. And I could put something totally different on him later. Like on the picture you saw with the Ogden did. He had the lady in a, like a blue. Um, that's fine. That's no problem. Once you got it established, other things established in your painting, you're good. Now watch how I do this um, rooftop. I'm going to do the rooftop with like a burnt orange. I use, it's called light red. But I don't use it wet at all. I wet it and then I, I wet it with my brush, pretty wet. Pull this down here a little bit. And then I dry it off. And then I'm going to take a test sheet of paper because you have to do this test first before you do it. So take your brush and then I like to punch it in here. And it's more of a dry brush effect. You have to have it wet enough and then you just go down and see how I'm getting lines. See, I just pushed it like this and it, puts, it pulls your bristles apart. And so I'm taking a damp brush. Try to get the water off, then breaking it down, and then just real lightly. Now you need enough paint on there 
So you need to paint on there and then you just kind of take your brush and see that's how I'll, I'll be doing the rooftop. And the straighter you are, the better it'll look. And basically you take, it's more of a dry brush and practice this. Don't just do it on a painting right away without looking, looking at it first. So definitely try it first. You can use the other colors in there, but I find in the first one it was fine to just use the color. Look at it, I sped in my painting. Okay, let's put that aside. And let me just try it here. I'm just going to take, I, maybe I'll make it a little bit darker. I'm going to put a little purple in there too. And then dab it, dab it, dab it. And take it down here. Don't press too hard because otherwise you won't get the, the look. And then I gotta follow the right um, angle here too. I didn't follow the right angle. I gotta follow it more like this. Oh, look what I'm doing. Okay. I didn't dry it enough is what I'm not doing. I gotta dry it more. And then push your brush down like this against the, against my, of course I did a paper towel. And then I take it on there and then just bleed it down. One, two, all the way across, see? Kind of straight, try to make it straight because if you wave, it's going to be a wavy rough, <laughs> which I already did twice now. <laughs> oh well, it's a wavy rough. This roof, um, and I think, where'd you say it was, um, Bevel? It was in Barbados. So we're going to make the kind of a crappy roof, <laughs> curved roof. Oh, I didn't even taste my beer yet. I got to taste my beer in, in one second. Let me just do this last thing. We'll take a taste of the beer today. A good German beer, I think. So, cheers, everybody. Cheers uh, to the Erdinger. Erdinger. And it's a Weiss beer. And I love Weiss beer. Oh, that's a 10. That's very good. Very good. And boy, that's almost 11. That's a very good beer. Let's give that one a 10.5. That's a 10.5. Okay, there's a, there's a rooftop. And so, again... Remember how I did this, practice this before you do it. And then I'm going to do uh, like back and forth here to give it a top, make it a little bit nicer. Top. Also, I'm going to dab it a little bit here. I'm tapping down to get the edge of it. I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping. So there you have my roof. Take my um, other smaller um, flat brush, the half inch, the half inch. I'm going to take this into the same colors and do it on the edge here. And the back roof, I can see a little bit of that in there. I'm just going to put that in there too. All right. And so, um, got a little bit more orangey, um, not or more red like instead of orangey at this time. It's all good. I, I can also go back in there with a couple of the lines. It's all just a, a you know, it's supposed to be a certain look. Like it's, you don't want to do every single line in there. That would just drive you nuts. It would drive me nuts. Now I'm going to put in. The dark underneath here and start putting in my darks because I we're ready for darks. So I'm going to go right in here, do the background dark. And then, um, and then so while it's wet, I'm going to put a little bit of orange or actually a little bit of brilliant orange, which is more red in it. And just put it like it's reflecting up into that, into that um, eave of the, of the building. It's one of the things that uh, my instructor had taught me to do. Put... I'm going to put gold as a shadowing on this house back here. So there's a little gold shadowing. Now this this is going to be one big wash of dark that's going to go through there this time. And this time I'm going to try to make it colorful but warm. And not so cool as I did before. I will add a little bit in the background here, a little cool. But as it comes into the front here, to the farther closer to us, it will get a little bit um, redder. <laughs> beer makes straighter lines. <laughs> See, I should have had the beer first. Sorry I'm late. Hey, Ann. I just found out I am a grandma for the first time. Congratulations, Anne. <laughs> grandma for the first time. Cheers to the grandma. <laughs> Boy, that's good. All right, so let's go to the big. I'm kind of scared you now. <laughs> Let me do these stairs before I get into the big, big one. I'm just going to make sure that I'm doing the right colors and such. So here now on the side of the stairs, I'm just going to go in there. I mean, I'm putting my darks. I got all my lights, and now it's time for the darks. And these are kind of more detailed darks, and I should be doing my big, big, huge dark here on the house. But um, if you're ever scared of an area touching it, do some of these smaller ones. Just kind of get yourself, you know, motivated to get into that area. And um, this is not a hard area, so then I could do the easy areas first. Here's a door. I put a door, and I put a door here, and I made it open. And so I'm going to just open this door up here. 
And if you need to find like a reference, go online and just type in guy entering door. I'm sure there's probably a, a scene out there that somebody already photographed. And then just use it. Okay, and so here. Now we're not doing super, super details yet, just these bigger details. Okay, let's go into our big, big details now, or the big, big wash here. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Move my camera over a little bit. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna start on this side and work my way over. And I'm using my big brush and make this um, a little bit warmer than I did the last time. So I'm gonna use my golds. And, um, and what else, greens, but um, purple. I'll use my purple and my golds. It'll be kind of a gray because it's gonna be, it's gonna be, um, actually that's too big a brush. I can't handle that kind of big a brush right now. Use my purple. Purple and gold make kind of a brown, and that's what the picture kind of is, a grayish brown. It's a gray, basically, is what it is, and so I'm going to make it pretty dark. And I'm wetting as I go along. I'm not wetting it first and then dropping color in. I'm wetting it with a color, and then I just add more color to it. I'm going to put a little green in there. Let's see, it's a little bit warmer this time. Using purple for my darks. And then the foundation of the house should be probably a little bit different. But when you first put it down, don't separate the foundation from the house. Excuse me. You can do that later with the lines and with the other color on top. So here you're just going to go across the top of that little pathway that goes up to the house. And then negative paint is foliage here. The leaves and such. And watch your, watch your values. Watch your values. See how they're coming along. Is it dark enough? Are you having a color in that area? In the eaves, I want to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to just work it. And I'm not getting the texture yet. Um, that's going to be after, after I get done. Then I'll put the texture on. And that is way too dark. So we're going to put a little bit of warmth in there. I'm just going to take some of this out. So you can take also things out. You know, once it's wet... You can go in and out, back and forth, uh, making things warmer, cooler, lighter, darker. It's all, when it's wet, you can do that. You don't have to um, make it perfect on the first brush stroke. People tend to think that you, you know, as long as it's wet and it's floating, you have time. Like here, I'm going to put a little bit of orange or red, reddish orange, right on the top here in the eave. It'll glow. It'll make the um, top of the eave glow. So I'm going to put that right here going to go across and yes I am using many different colors in here but mostly warm this time with the violets and I'm basically not using any blue and so if you notice I've not used any blue I'm using my my violets my reds my greens and my yellows which are all complements to each other and so that's what I'm sticking with now if I would start adding a blue in there it just would not fit the scene because I'd have to put it somewhere else I could do that still, but it's, you know, you, you want to stick with that color scheme. Last week when you guys did the three color, you did so well because you just had to use those three colors. And so here we tend to go with full color. We tend to want to just use all the colors. And that's not sometimes the best way of painting is using all the colors. Yes, you can get colorful, but it's not realistic, you know, and you don't want to make your painting look like a clown, like a, um, like a rainbow. And then we'll put a little bit of gold in here. Gold and brown. I mean, I don't use many earth tones a lot of times, but um, as I'm looking at Ogden's stuff, he used a lot of browns and a lot of earth tones, especially on some of the outside scenes. doesn't mean you shouldn't, um, you know, just because if you don't like browns, you know, like what's the one thing I always, we have a little running bet here, or not bet, but a little gag going that I, I think purple basically is brown. Brown and purple are the same thing to me. And um, here we're going to put a little bit of brown <laughs> in this whole area right here. And so I'm making this a little bit different from the... I'm going to make the foundation here a little bit lighter than I did on the top. So that it does dif differ than what the, is on the top. And then I can do this over here. And I'll make sure that's starting to dry. And then go around here, flowers, and get all this in there. And look at how nice and dark that got. Isn't that nice? You know, we went right around the right around the windows. Now the windows can be 
made to look like this is the the um, molding of the of the of the windows will be that color you first put down and so that's our big area of um, shadow and then which is really weird that this really down here this edge right here probably should be light because again it's facing this way but because this top is light we can then and because this is a dirty um, cement stoop and this thing here I'm just gonna make it dark and it'll be fine and we'll put some gold in there too just to match the house a little bit and kind of go this way we can make this a little bit darker and then later on I will put shadowing from this plant this little tree this little flower tree there I'll put that in there okay pour a little bit more beer this is ten and a half beer boy I haven't given the high one like this in a while but this is good Cheers again. Any, um, any reason you're brushing down as opposed to across with the wood panels? Oh, this way? Um, I don't do the panels this way only because I, I identify those later. And so first I just want a wash of water. I don't identify the panels of each. I don't think small. Like I don't think each individual um, panel that runs across, the siding. I don't do each siding. That comes later when I put it in. I'd rather have a nice clean wash. I guess I could do it this way but I'm not trying to identify that shape yet of the each individual thing I'm doing the whole the whole thing in dark is what I'm doing I'm just making sure that this gets dark you know I want it to be um, a nice big dark wash because the the easiest and best washes are the ones that go easy on with a big area because those are the ones you can get making do, doing things like this where you get little little runny stuff in there and gives you texture so I let the paint do its thing, letting it just work itself large areas. And then I get all the details stuff like the antenna on there. I put antenna. This last one I did put a, um, I put a, I put a, um, what do you call it, a chimney on this one. Only because I thought I was going to put smoke coming out of there because I like that Ogden one. But I decided not to put any smoke coming out of there. I mean, you could, but this is a bright day and the way I would have the chimney on. So, um, like maybe this one would have been better if I would have put some smoke in there. But, you know, I didn't do that. Because, you know, it's whatever you want to do. You do whatever you want. Um, Bevel, it's your picture also. You do what you want with this. Um, you don't have to use any of these colors I use. You can use the exact colors of the um, image too. This is just, I always show people how, what I would do to it, what I do to a scene. Just because that's the way I work. That's the way I think. And how I'm thinking about, you know, trying to make this look like a, a Ogden and Pleisner painting. All right. And so now we're getting into detail. So now I'm using my smaller brush. Um, that's the big area now. So we basically just have to get our small um, darks. Our small darks that um, are a little bit more tedious. The ones that you have to go in there. And, and so the first thing I'm going to do is identify this window. The last thing I will do is those lines that, and, and show the, the texture of the boards. I'll do that later because, again, I want that big wash. That beautiful wash that you get by working wet into wet. That working wet into wet is so important to making a watercolor look beautiful. Uh, that's the best thing about watercolor. That's how you use watercolor is to get the watercolor doing its own thing. Here we're putting a little bit of his arm, his face we're going to put in there. That's Bella coming home from a long day's work. He's coming home. <laughs> Love the cars you have going on in the house. Thanks. Thanks, Bevo. I like. I'm glad you like the colors. Uh, we still gotta get more going in here. <laughs> but again, you use any colors you like. Anybody use any colors you like. That's um. That was a, that was the whole reason of me doing one color, two color, three color, full color. Um, I like the three color the best out of all the ones we've done because you guys really did an amazing, amazing job. Because you knew you just had to use those colors, and knowing that you have to use those three colors makes you more aware than of like values and you're thinking about how you're using the paint and not so worried about what color am I use for this what color am I use for that that could sometimes stifle you when you're painting if you're always thinking about the colors and don't know what color that color is in the picture don't worry about the colors in the picture make it make it work for the painting make it work for the painting that's more important so a little details now here we got so I'm gonna let's think I'm gonna make this top a little bit different. Let me make it 
Let's do the shadow side. And actually, it kind of looks good with the light. Hmm. Let's just make his pants dark. We'll give him. We'll give him blue jeans. How about some blue jeans on there? And just the the back, the front side will be dark. And um, the back side will be backlit. And so we're going to leave a little bit of the back on the edge. We'll leave that alone so that it looks like it's lit from the back. And there's a shadow for maybe from his bag that he's holding here. Alright, and then uh, see how I'm working small now. I am working small. I'm going to turn this sideways so I've got to do a couple lines. I like doing a cross like this for lines. I don't like going up and, up and down. It's easier for my hand, like I'm writing, to go across than it is to go downwards, up and down. The cross is much, much easier. And yes, this is detailed. That's okay. There's a time and place for the details. I mean, a lot of people paint really detailed. And that's, you know, look at the, all these shows. They're winning all these awards. There's some really nice detailed stuff they got in there. I like a little bit of detail. And I like a little bit of of um, where it's a little bit looser, too. A little bit of both works well, too. I'm going to make this a little bit gold on the side here. So he's, I'm not going to make it dark. I'm just going to make it a little bit gold so that there's some, some of the the shadow on him and then of course there's a shadow on the ground here going across hitting hitting the house and then there's gonna be a shadow on the house from him hitting so when you're putting something in that you don't know what it is because it's not in the picture just think um, how obvious things are the sun's coming this way it's hitting this side's gonna be dark this side's gonna be light it's hitting a shadow and it's gonna be hitting this building and anything else that's going this way is gonna be light and then on top down it'll be light Anything away from that will be dark. So like this area right here, this part will be darker. Now we have a little bit of the electric, um, the electric line here with the meter, the electric meter right here. We're just going to put that in. So there's a little electric meter. Side of the siding is a little bit, and I'm, see I'm waiting for this to dry still because it's still a little wet. So you don't want to do it when it's um, wet because then you won't get these nice hard edge lines. Here we have a gas meter. This is probably where the gas comes into the house. And we're going to put a little line in there. And then a shadow. And this also, this will not have a shadow, but it will have one underneath that. You, you can have shadows and shadows too. You know that, don't you? Not all the time does it just uh, one shadow. Because even in a shadow, sometimes it's so strong that here where it's a little bit darker, maybe you put a shadow right there because it's a little bit darker right underneath the eave than the rest of the shadow is. So it's like a double shadow. But I also want to put color in there, so I love to put a little bit of orange in there once I put the water down. I like to float a little color in there to show it reflects from the ground. Oh, I didn't went too far. <laughs> so watch how I rub this out here. Rub that out, paper towel. And there we go. All right. So there we have our meter. Make a little shadow on the meter itself. And now comes super details. Now we get into fine, fine details, like um, the lines. Well, actually, let's do the windows first. So I get my window brush. My quarter-inch brush is usually my window brush because windows are rectangular, and a flat brush makes rectangles really easily. And so the sky ends up being pretty light, doesn't it? I could always wet that again and put another little bit of wash of like clouds in there too. I'll wait until the end to see if I need that. So then I'm going to go in here and just negative paint in the panels. I'm just going to negative paint in the sides and reflections underneath here. And this is the stuff that I know it's not, it's hard to watch because it's very just detailed. And But I try to do it as fast as possible. So I'm going to go in here really quickly. Put in our nice darks like where the shade is not. Um, there's, a, there's a part where the shades up a little bit from that and so put this in there and so we're going to go up a little bit so there are shades up a little bit on that part here we have um i know the curtains are a little bit in the middle here i'm going to make the curtains a little bit different from how they have it in the picture i make curtains go to the side a little bit and so you see the dark and then right away around the flowers i was going to use masking fluid for the flowers so if you can't go around the flowers and want to use masking fluid Definitely do that. That's fine. That uh, is absolutely fine. And then I'm going to put a little bit of dark through here. And between the flowers, maybe this is a little bit dark. All 
right? And see how you can see into the picture now? You're seeing right into the into the house, and then on the side here, I'm gonna put like you're seeing through the glass, the little um, I forget what they call these, kind of window panes. I used to know, but I always forget. <laughs> and so we're gonna do this thing through here. We're gonna put a nice dark through here. shadows shadows inside the window you don't need to reflect actually like a window pane like you, and unless there's sunlight hitting it this is totally in shadow unless there's a little bit of light flickering off of that then you put like a little whitish whatever the yellow is in there but it's not happening and this these windows are totally in shadow and there's nothing reflecting off of them at all so when glass is, is basically transparent so you don't really see anything through there when that dries I'll put some line more lines in there now for the shadowing of the flowers, I'm going to use this purple. We got a lot of purple, and so, I mean, we got a lot of yellow, so purple is just perfect for putting in a lot of shadows. It actually looks really well using lavender. Lavender is a great color for when you're using yellow in the sky. And these flowers are a little purple right here. Just going to put a little purple shadowing on them. Leaving the paper white. I'm using the white of the paper. Um, we had some people do some pink flowers. That's fine. But remember, if you're doing another color and they're pink, have it blend. And I could make them pink because I am using red as my complement. Now this shadow also, this purple, I'm going to use right away. How, how, what kind of time do we have? Oh, we got plenty of time. We're going to go right across here and just going to put some shadows on the walkway here from this plant, right? I mean, it's, light's coming this way. It's hitting this. It's hitting right here with some shadowing. And I'm using a violet because I'm using the violet on the white, the white surface. And when you're using a white surface, you can put any color you want for shadowing. Just follow the whatever you've been using elsewhere. If this was, if let's say this was a red, red, like it was the same color as that, um, the pathway was red, then it'd be a dark red. But with white, you make it any color you want for the shadowing. Hmm. Should I make this dark? Because it's like looking kind of nice like that. I'm not sure if I should make that really dark, like the photo. Hmm. Maybe. Let's see what happens if I do it real dark. Take our half inch brush and make it really dark and um, just make this corner pop out too a little bit and I'll make it textury by just tapping it and dabbing it a little bit make it a little texture and then negative paint like weeds in front you can also scrape out you can also scrape out okay I'm leaving a little white there, like it's shining there a little bit. Or maybe not. <laughs> little grasses. And now underneath the uh, underneath the plant here, we're going to do some um, gold. Because I don't want to use dark green. I want to use a gold for like the shadowing underneath the plant. Even though they probably wouldn't be on this side, but more on this side. All right. And don't get too crazy with um, weeds. Like don't put a bunch of lines in there. Um, that'll give it too much credit down there. You're going to put too much happening down there. We don't want to see all those little things. We want to keep our eyes focused on the, the center of interest and the secondary interest. This flower is a secondary interest. Or actually it could be this is a center of interest and this is like, no, I think it's this way around. <laughs> all right. Final thing is super, super fine details. Every single line. And this is going to be so boring to watch. <laughs> so here we go. <clears throat> all right. So I'm using my rigger brush. A real fine rigger and we can put two antennas here or lightning rods not and that's one of the things I learned from my, my teacher he put lightning rods and everything he loved putting lightning rods on things and now my little dots there those will be birds and so we'll go in here my mentor being Irving Shapiro Robert Wade and they all did these little lightning rods and so now these lines um actually I got even a thinner yeah, even a thinner rigger. Here's a real small rigger. See that how fine that is. The really, this is a number two rigger, which I don't have in my set, but I may have to get a, a couple more brushes in my set. And so I'm going real light, and I can erase these pencil lines afterwards um, because they're on white, and I can paint right through the, right through the. You can take it off right through the paint. And you don't need to take it off because if you're going right on top of the line, 
then the line is covered up anyways. But the ones that you didn't cover up and you want to get rid of those, just erase them. All right, now these have to be really dark. And so I'm going to go in there with a really super sharp dark. Like first thing I'll do is go underneath here, underneath the, I'm going to do little dots, like what I'm going on. Because this um, rough top is of sheet metal that's corrugated kind of. And so you're going to kind of make little dots, so uh, shows the edge of that. And maybe a little line for the underneath there. And I'm using solid purple and black because I don't need to use any other color than besides that. And now we're going across. And I, I usually just start like here. And I go across one, two, three, four, five. Am I covering this? Oh, look at that. Oh, man, this, this is a really... Okay, I got one line there where they got to come back and they got to fix that. Um, and then not going to add texture yet. You can do the texture by taking your brush over like this. You can just kind of go over like this. Watch this. So you just take hardly a damp brush and just kind of give it texture. Just give it a little texture. Use any color. Oh. <laughs> Kind of brushing over it, getting lines like it's wood. This is more of a tint. This is not very thick, and I'm just giving a little tint and a bunch of little lines. So it looks like wood, and these are going to be a little bit lighter than the than the lines I put in for the siding. Or this this is siding, I think. Yeah, it's not a log cabin. It's just siding. One, two. Go slow. Don't go try to go as fast as I did because then you get messed up. You make curvy lines and yes I put every line in why not this is this is the center of interest now this is the area of interest if you want to use a ruler and put on there I've seen people do that put their thumb on a ruler go across um, everything's good it all depends on how detailed you want to get it some people want super super straight lines use a ruler you can actually do that with a um, ruling pen it's that one thing where you put paint in it and you just um, roll it I don't get that detail, but you can. Now I'm going to do a little, little lines in here. Now I know in the photo, see there, there's wires coming through here. Um, I guess I could bring them in there. I just don't... Hmm. I think I still want to do the sky a little bit darker. The sky, look how light this kind of you can see the sky is very light so I'm going to show you how to make it a little bit darker of the sky you can always make things you know let's, let's make a little bit more of the of the wood texture back and forth you can do that here too you can do a little textury it's a tint it's a tint very light a light, very light watery um, brush stroke with a lot of water Hardly any pigment, just go across it and get a little texture. And it's not going to be so dark that it's going to take away and go in those lines that you did. Nope, it's just going to be enough to show. And here I'm going to put a line right down the middle of this window. Line down the middle. Letting it be. This is a door, actually. This is not a window. It's a door, also, I think. <laughs> I think it is. Oh, and then I almost forgot these um, stems. So the stems on the tree. Why well, yeah, This bugs me that there are no railings. We never pass code. <laughs> you know, and that's the first thing I, I told people that if you're not going to put a person in, at least put a um, at least put a railing on the stairs. Um, yes, it would not pass code. <laughs> Maybe in Barbados they don't have a code for putting um, the railing on there. So you go ahead and put a, um, a railing on instead of a person. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Okay, these colors are wonderful. Liking your colors. Thanks, Evan. How would an ink and wash work on this ink wash? Uh, I'm not really into ink washes, but it would work. You know, I've just seen, um, I just was on Facebook. I saw that Karen Knudsen just did a, um, a plain air with line work and their ink work, it looked like. Or just not ink work, but um, really thin lines. Here's the sidewalk lines. And they got a little big there. That mine got a little bit too thick, so just wiping over it. And okay, the tree trunks. The tree trunks are the final. And so we're gonna go in here and then just break them down. And they're in the picture still, so I'm gonna leave them in the picture. 
Let's go with a nice dark. Dark, dark, dark. Nice and dark. You can even use black, that's fine. And don't, these have like an anatomy to them. They get thicker, the main branch is a little bit thicker than the other ones, so don't just wisp away at it. You know, I see a lot of people do that, and that's one of my pet peeves is when you sit there and wisp branches and not really make them look like they're attached to something. So really work it. I mean, I don't like to see you kind of just wisp away at it. I could also do lines here, individual, because each panel was one panel. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. Panel, panel, panel. Panel, panel, panel. And it goes away. All right. Well, what do you think, guys? Is it done? Hmm. Oh, the sky. The sky, sky, sky. So to me, the sky just looks a little bit too light. I, I'd rather have a little bit more dynamic in the sky. I know. Let me look at the. Um, let me look at the Agnes. Like his is the same thing. It's really light, but look at this. He barely shows his set top of this, um, top of his house here, and this one also. You almost don't see the edges of the houses. But I do like the smoke coming out of here. But I think I'm gonna put a couple of clouds in there, just because it seems so plain there. I like to get a little bit of something in there. And that will be just about perfect timing then. And we'll be done. We'll still hit the hour mark. And so how do you re-wet something? I like to take the brushwork over it. Or you can also spray it, but I'm just going to take my brush over it. I'm not going to wreck anything because it's not much there to wreck. And I'm going to actually take these little spots that I had put on there. Take those away. Now I shouldn't have put the antennas on before I did this. Because they're going to be probably... Alright, so let's put a little bit of... Um... I'm going to clean out a little spot here. Last two minutes here. Sorry, guys. Hope we don't go over. So let's take some yellow, orange. I use white, right? And then I'm going to take a little bit of... Make a little bit of cloud. A little bit of clouds. A little bit darker. Because even in a, a really light sky, when there's a little bit of, um, it's like yellowish, there's clouds in there still. All right, so there we go. I know that seems scary sometimes to go back into something they've already done. But if you're going to make it look better, more, more power to you. you get it done. If I didn't like this and I felt that all of a sudden I didn't like how that came out, then I would just wash it out. You know, I can always easily wash it out again. But I just felt that it was just a little bit too much light up there. And it just looks a little bit more, you know, dynamic. Also makes my flowers pop out more because it's a little bit darker now. All right. So that's it, guys. One more sip. Toast. Cheers, guys. And next week we are on again next week. Uh, this weekend I will be up in Cedarburg, Wisconsin doing a demonstration for the, for the Wisconsin Water Code Society. And um, that's in Cedarburg on Saturday at 1 at the Civic Center, I think, there in Cedarburg. Um, go to my website. Um, I should, I'm a, it's not actually up there right now. I, I should put that on there. Or follow me on Facebook and I'll put it up there. And um, if you're doing this one... Please post it on my Facebook um, page, the Becker Art page, and show us what you're doing. You guys did an awesome job last week with the lilies for Easter. Those looked out super, super nice. So let's see the difference between this afternoon and this one today, this evening. And I guarantee you it's a little bit more, less colorful, but I find it to be a little bit more like Ogden and Pleisner. <laughs> That's what I was going for. So here you go. Here is this afternoon's. And here's this evenings. So daytime evening, right? <laughs> so cheers, guys. Um, thanks again, um, Bevel, for letting us use your image. It was awesome. We may try to use another one of yours. And um, until next week, when we don't know what we're doing yet, but I will see you then, guys. And if you're up near, um, if you're up near Cedarburg, Wisconsin, up above uh, Milwaukee, actually a little bit higher up than Milwaukee, um, meet me up there this weekend. You can have a great time watching me do a watercolor demonstration, just like this. All right. So cheers, guys. Here's to... There we are. <laughs> we'll see you next week.